So this year marks my fifth year in the engineering industry. I still remember about five years ago, I attended my university's career fair, where I met the first company that gave me a chance and allowed me to intern for over a year. This ultimately led to my full-time job and the start of my career. During my time in the field, I have met many great people, some which became my mentors and others my good friends. In the process, I was very shocked because from all the people that I've met, several of these engineers are actually self-made millionaires. Yes, you heard that right, millionaires. And this is what inspired me to make this video, a plan I'm going to attempt to follow and share with my audience to see if we can become self-made millionaires. So how did these presumably normal individuals make themselves millionaires? Well, from the experience of the people I met and some online research, there are two main ways you can become a millionaire working as an engineer. The first and hardest method is working for a tech startup. I personally know and have met a few individuals who made their wealth in this manner. The story usually goes like this. These individuals were driven engineers who worked very hard at a more established company. They became experts in their field over several years and then decided to take their knowledge to a startup where they exchanged their talents and time for company equity. From here on, one of two things happen. Either the company goes public or the company gets acquired by a bigger company and boom, overnight millionaires. Obviously, this method is extremely risky since statistically speaking, most startups fail while also having a reputation for having employees work insane hours. The second and easier method is saving and investing. This really surprised me due to its simplicity and ease of understanding, but surprisingly, it is not taught at school and I had no idea it was even possible until recently. Growing up, I really believed everyone lived paycheck to paycheck because it's what I saw at home until I became an engineer and I was taught the way of the rich. Again, I actually know engineers who are self-made millionaires, so it's not theoretical. This actually has worked for people that I know. And if I'm being completely honest, you don't really need to be an engineer to do this as long as you understand the principle. So let's get to the method. Like I mentioned, this involves consistently saving and investing and holding over a long period of time. In this video, I'm going to focus on the 401k and the mathematics of compound interest to show how simple it is to understand. So let's start with the 401k. The 401k is a retirement account offered by many employers where an individual can save a portion of their income tax-free and invest it for retirement. The idea is that you can save your money now tax-free and pay taxes later once you are retired and theoretically in a lower tax bracket. As of the making of this video in 2019, the max contribution is $19,000 a year plus any matching that your employer offers. So as an example, let's say you're making $100,000 a year, which by the way, is not unusual for an engineer and also makes the math easier to understand. With this amount, you will be able to invest up to 19% of your pre-tax income or $19,000. This will go into this account and only $81,000 will be taxed. In addition, certain companies offer what is known as a match, which is usually a percentage of your income that they contribute to your 401k. So assuming your company matches up to 5% of your income, you can make an additional $5,000 per year. Assuming this scenario, you would be investing up to $24,000 a year. Now you might be wondering, well, if I want to be a millionaire and I'm saving $24,000 a year, it will take me over 40 years to reach a million. And this would be true if you save it in cash. But what if I told you there was a faster way to get to a million? Now, before I move on, we're going to have to make some assumptions and base our predictions on the historical returns of the S&P 500. We are doing this because no one really knows what's going to happen in the future, but over the last 90 years of the S&P 500, it has shown a return of about 8% per year. So we are going to use these numbers and create the model. If you have a computer available, you can follow along. And if you want to support the channel, I will have the spreadsheet in the description below. So let's start. So the first thing that we need to uh, determine is salary. It's going to be 100K, just to keep the number simple. For 2019, the max contribution is $19,000 uh, a year percent contribution. So this is going to be a number that when you start working, you get to choose this number and it's basically going to 
determine the percentage of your salary that you will be contributing into your 401k. In this case, just for now, we're going to just choose uh, 19. Actual contribution will be equal to the 100,000 as a salary times uh, the percentage S&P 500 uh, return, which as I mentioned is about 8%. Uh, finally, the company match. So we're just going to call it match. And uh, typically for a company, it's pretty standard to do between four and 5%. So for now, we're just going to do 5%. All right. So a year one, when you just start working, um, you're going to uh, decide what, how much money you want to contribute, right? So the first year, the amount that you're going to be contributing is going to be your actual contribution. So we're going to do equals your actual contribution. But uh, so if we were to just choose that one, it's going to be 19,000. But uh, let's remember that we also have a match. So uh, the match will be a percentage of your salary that your company will give you uh, and, you know, basically as a benefit of you contributing to your 401k or, you know, preparing for retirement. So um, from 5% from $100,000, uh, it's going to be about $5,000. So what we need to do is we need to add that to your first year's contribution because it will be your company's contribution. So what we need to do is have the actual contribution, and then add um, 100 uh, the salary times the match. And this kind of makes sense because if we were to just do it uh, here, so salary times the match, it's $5,000. So it, what it did is basically this equation that I uh, wrote up here, which is the actual contribution plus salary times the match, is basically just um, your $19,000 plus $100,000 times 5%, which is $5,000. So it just added both numbers up. The, the very first year that you contribute, uh, you will have about $24,000. Um, so this is the contribution of your first year, contribution of your second year, contribution of your third year, contribution. So we're going to be keeping track of the contributions that you made per year and how they're going to be changing per year as you get closer to retirement. Year one, we said that you contributed $24,000. But remember how we talked about that percentage, that return, the S&P 500 return. So what this is saying is, whatever amount of money that you have on um, invested into this S&P 500 index fund will yield about 8% return on average per year. Like some years it will be higher, like we saw on the graph. Some years it will be lower. Some years you were going to lose money. So if we, if we take this into account by year two, what we need to do is we need to set up the equation so that it adds the 8%. So we're going to select this number times the 8%, but we need to add the principal, which is the $24,000. At the end of one year, your number would have grown to 25920 So if we basically continue this trend, it will keep at, uh, increasing the amount. So what this is saying is, now let me increase it all the way to year 10. Your initial investment, year one, these $24,000, assuming the 8% return, will have grown into $47,000. Your first, very first year's contribution after 35 years will be worth $328,000. We can see how the money changes per year that you've been working. And you see, you notice that this graph is starting to look like something that you saw earlier in the video. Let's do a 0% uh, return. What you did is you basically store your money in a couch and uh, you never touched it. So what this means is that over the 35 years, your money will basically be flat. Let's do the same thing for year two. So year two now, you're one year closer to retirement. So you have less time to grow because you had one less year to grow your money. Year 34 of the previous year will be year 35 of this current year so you're going to be basically losing out losing out on this uh delta between these two this is just kind of showing how your money will behave in reality only these numbers are the actual money that comes out of your pocket people talk about like compounding and the amount of time in the market versus time in the market let's say that you started investing year 20 like you didn't care like when you started working you didn't care about investing or about retirement you were like i have a lot of time to to invest later on i'm still young i don't really care about that stuff i rather spend my money now now your money really only has 
these amounts of years to grow. Whereas if you invested your f very first year, by the same time, which is the year 35, here in year 35 will be worth $328,000 versus only $76,000, which is a extremely big difference. Let's graph this one just to kind of show what this number looks like. If you look at that, same exact behavior. After only 20 years, you would have become a millionaire. Uh, I met a lot of younger people that started working like earlier. So, you know, you can start working at like 22, like straight out of school, earning similar figures. And if you, if you do the math for 22 or 20 years, you would only be 42 years old. You would be a still relatively young person. See how, how we mentioned if you were to keep the same amount of money that you contributed and your company matched you every year in the couch, you can see that it will take even at year 35, you still wouldn't reach a million. It would take you because this will keep rising. It would take you a little bit over 40 years to do it. So this is the power of compound interest. And that's why Einstein said that, you know, compound interest is the seventh wonder of the world or eighth wonder. I forget. Anyway, that's it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more videos. Oh, and also, Smash that notification bell for the YouTube algorithm.